Deep Dive Time, part two with Rob Vino, and this time, I promise I'm not going to delete it before you guys can watch it. I pulled a bonehead move earlier in the week. We had a two-parter with Rob Vino, and I deleted part two of the interview. Not happening twice. Rob, thank you so much for taking time to do the same segment twice. Let's do it better the second time around. <laughs> you got it, buddy. No problem. Of course, uh, Rob, before we get going, why don't you tell people, A, why they should care about what you have to say, and B, where they can find you if they're interested in more of the things that you have to say. Well, I think my feelings would be hurt if nobody cared what I said, so that would be a good starter. Um, Been around, you know, Teddy, uh, doing baseball for a long, long time, since 1992, so uh, a lot of experience in this, especially where bullpens and totals are concerned so that's why we discuss these two um things with with you on this podcast at the start of the season for my work go ahead to sportsmemo.com daily selections right there if you like more of a statistical based website go to robvinosports.com you can get everything you need for your own handicapping each and every day right there robvinosports.com great thank you rob now let's get into the meat of this we talked bullpens in part one of the deep dive, you can go to the archives and check out that interview from Monday's show. Today, we're going to talk lineups. And the premise, of course, is that starting pitching by the beginning of May is basically priced correctly. You're not going to see a lot of overvalued or undervalued starters. Maybe 90% of the starters will be priced appropriately within a month of opening day. But bullpens and lineups are areas where the markets don't necessarily react strongly to. They'll react strongly to starting pitching, but when we're talking about where to find value, lineups is one way to do it. And there's one lineup, Rob, from a team that made the World Series last year that you want to talk uh, talk about right from the get-go as being a legitimately elite lineup, way better than it was last year because of some guy named Brantley being back on the field. Yeah, the team you speak of, Teddy, obviously the Cleveland Indians, losers to the Chicago Cubs in the World Series last year. But it's hard to think that they could find improvement, but they certainly have found more than just improvement. I think they found a double dose of improvement inside that lineup. Uh, You know, offseason, they acquire Edwin Encarnacion, uh, extreme power and run producing type bat for the middle of their lineup. And with that, of course, as you mentioned, Michael Brantley, who played, but I don't know, 14, 15 games last year for this team, arguably in 2015, the best position player in the Indians everyday lineup, Michael Brantley back. Uh, Certainly he's going to ease into things a little bit, but his presence from the left-hand side makes a big difference in that lineup. And of course, with Encarnacion, they just become a far more productive team. I would, you know, argue that this is the best offense in major league baseball this season to go with the pitching and the relief pitching that they have. It makes them quite the bundle to handle for anybody that's going to face them. But Cleveland, um, you know, with Frankie Lindor and other guys, certainly a lineup that's going to be a a lot to handle each and every night for opposing, opposing pitchers and bullpens. Now there were three teams that you wanted to highlight as being potential over teams, teams that don't necessarily have the pitching, but may well have the lineups and maybe underrated lineups. One of them is the L.A. Angels, a team obviously with Calhoun and Trout at the top of the order. What do you like about the Angels when it comes to their lineup? Yeah, you know, and I kind of would like to refer to them as a turnaround team where totals are concerned, Teddy, because this team last year against the total went 69-83 with 10 pushes, 69 overs, 83 unders, 10 pushes. Um, this is a team that, aside from Matt Shoemaker and Garrett Richards, you don't see an awful lot in their starting pitching, and those guys can be had at times as well. And the bullpen is just atrocious in my estimation. You've got a lineup that is very potent, and I just feel like this team is going to turn those numbers around. The 69 and 83 to me is more of an aberration than reality. Um, the angels, they're going to be priced higher. You know, we're going to see nines on this American league team. And, and that's 
always a difficult judgment to make when you're handicapping day to day, but I just feel like late innings of games can get away from this team as far as pitching is concerned, but they can also be productive innings for the Angels. So I'm going to use them as my turnaround team where totals are concerned, and I'm going to point them towards the over. Again, we're not saying go out and play the Anaheim Angels every single night over the total, uh, but they should produce a winning record toward the over this season. Rob, real quick, I want to talk about the two other teams that you highlight as potential over squads. And one of them, you know, the Kansas City Royals, you know, with uh, Moustakas back in the lineup. Uh, but a lot of free agency questions for KC. Yet you're looking at this Royals team as being more potent offensively than they've been in recent seasons. And I, I also, you know, to combine that, Teddy, <clears throat> I'll say that they're on the downside where their bullpen is concerned. In years past, we could count on the Kansas City bullpen to shut down the late innings. But so many of these over-unders are decided in innings 7, 8, and 9. And with Kansas City, you just don't have that ability to shut down the opponent anymore. Their bullpen is a far cry from what it was three years ago. You're talking about two really reliable arms in Herrera. And I don't even know if I could call Joe Kim Soria a reliable arm anymore. It may be trending toward average status. So I think that Kansas City's lineup, which <clears throat> certainly underachieved last year and has a lot of the core pieces. Lorenzo Cain spent a lot of time injured last year. Moustakis obviously was injured. Alex Gordon had a subpar season. I think if those guys bounce back toward the mean, uh, this team will find their way up and over more totals than unders. Last year, their record 75 over, 78 under, nine pushes. I think this is more of an over team this time around. And the Miami Marlins, a third team that you identified as being more potent offensively, perhaps, in the betting markets would indicate. Rob, we've got less than a minute left. I want to talk about the number one under team when it comes to a good pitching staff, good bullpen, bad lineup. You've got the New York Mets highlighted as a team that you don't want to be playing a whole lot of overs with. Yeah, and the Mets are going to be lined, you know, toward the under, Teddy, so it's a difficult call, but I do think that the, the lineup is so old, and there's so many strikeout holes inside that lineup that I just don't trust that offense whatsoever. And then you combine that with the really, really strong starting pitching that they have and a pretty dependable bullpen um the pitchers go late into games which helps the bullpen out but i think that everyday lineup just the age on it and their their strikeout prowess uh, it just doesn't thrill me at all so even if we're seeing sixes or six and a half so i think the mets can score five four or four runs in a game and still remain under the total i like the mets to be an under team this year last year with the good pitching and this lineup they were 74 over 86 under three pushes i think that that stays the same Rob Vino from SportsManWare.com and Rob Vino Sports. Thank you so much for your time. Best of luck throughout this baseball season. Always a pleasure, Teddy. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys, for the full video, go to SBRPicks.com. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.